Good morning, and thank you, Kyle. It really has been great. As you've already met two of uh, the Dominicans that are with me, they're going to be a part of my sermon as well, so you get to know them here shortly, and they're going to share with you in Spanish and in English about what God is doing in the Dominican Republic. I do want to correct one thing Kyle said. He said that Ryan Vanlon is doing great things in the Dominican Republic. That is not true. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is doing great things in the Dominican Republic. And myself and these other Dominicans that are with me, we're just humbled enough and honored enough to be the tools that God had chosen to use in the Dominican Republic. And we're great, we're very grateful to be here with you because this church, Crossroads, has been a part of our ministry since 2003 when we started working in the eastern part of the country. You've been with us since day one. And it's really, really great. We now, in the eastern part of the Dominican Republic, have five church plants. Three are in Spanish, two are in Creole that reach the Haitian immigrants that are there. We have a school of over 400 children receiving an education that they did not receive and receiving a Christian education in the hope of Jesus Christ. In the neighborhood that the school exists, there are 5,000 school-age children. 3,000 of them didn't have anywhere to go to school because the public schools are all full. They have 60 to 65 students per teacher in the public schools. So we felt like we had to do our part, and we started a school, and now we have over 400 children receiving a Christian education in that neighborhood. We also have a medical outreach that we started just a year ago that's using medicine to get to diabetes patients, patients that were, they're going to die from diabetes if they don't take the medicine. And all of our facilities and everything we do is absolutely free to the public. We actually have the the director, the, the Dominican that runs that entire medical outreach is actually here this morning. You're going to hear a story from that ministry. So I do bring you greetings from all of our ministry in the Dominican Republic. I didn't even include our music ministry. We have a young couple. If you'll show the slide that has all the pictures of all the people, we have a young couple in our ministry that are professional Christian rappers. Yes, hip-hop music, rap music. Um, you can probably figure out which ones they are on there. The one in the top, in the middle, that look like rappers. They are Christian rappers, and they're a young couple, and they are the most popular Christian rappers in the entire country. And they're a part of our ministry. They've been a part of us for years. They're from one of our churches, and they're wonderful. Now, if you think rap music in English, if you think they speak really quickly in English and rap music, you ought to hear it in Spanish. It's really fast. But I do bring you greetings from the Dominican Republic. Um, it's great to be here this morning. Now, here's what I want to do. In the Dominican Republic, we speak Spanish. So anytime I preach there, we preach in Spanish. These guys that are going to come up in a minute, they speak in Spanish. Now, when a preacher gets up in front of a church in the Dominican Republic, there's one phrase that he says. He says, que Dios le bendiga. And what that means is, may God bless you. Now, why do we do that? It's to get the congregation going because we're not sure if you're ready to study God's word or not. So the preacher says, que Dios le bendiga. May God bless you. And you as a congregation, you have to respond together. You have to say, amen. Okay, now that's a Spanish word. Amen. It's, a, it's Spanish for amen. You with me? Amen. So here's what we're going to do. The preacher says, que Dios le bendiga, and you say, amen. But if you don't say it with enough power, enough passion, we, we think you're not ready to study God's word. So we keep saying, que Dios le bendiga, until you are ready, until we feel like you're ready. Okay, can we do that this morning? Can we do that this morning? All right, you ready? Que Dios le bendiga. Que Dios le bendiga. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning, which you are, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. We're going to be preaching, speaking about the famous, the famous passage of Matthew 28 called the Great Commission. I'm a missionary here today, so of course I'm going to preach on the Great Commission. Because that's why I do what I do. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and following, Jesus says this. He looks at his disciples. He gathers all of his disciples together. He looks right at them and he says this. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, we call this the Great Commission because that's exactly what it is. It's a commission. It's a command from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He looks right at his disciples Right at his followers, he says, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the world, and I want you to make disciples. 
Now, how are you going to do that? You baptize them in my name. You teach them everything I have commanded you. You teach them about the word of God. And guess what? I promise that I will be with you every step of the way. The Great Commission, it's a call to action. Specific instructions for Christians to go into the world and make disciples. Over in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus echoes these words. He says this once again to his disciples. He says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, do you understand what Jesus is saying? He looks at Christians, if you follow Jesus, and he says, Hey, this is my command to you. I want you to go into the world and make disciples. I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want you to be my witnesses here in your town and then everywhere else into the world. This is the command of Jesus. Now, here's one really cool thing about this passage. This happens after Jesus was crucified on the cross, after he's been in the grave for three days, after he was resurrected from the dead. Then he looks at his disciples and says, Hey, now here's what I want you to do. Go be my witnesses. Now, I don't know about you, but if I have someone that I love, someone that I care about, and they pass away, and they're dead for three days, and then after three days, they're in my living room, and they say, hey, Ryan, here's what I want you to go do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to believe them, and I'm going to go do it, much less this is Jesus Christ. They believe he is God. He is God. And he says, it's simple. Here's what I want you to do. Go make disciples. Everywhere you go, be teaching them about what I've taught you. And be my witnesses. So the question this morning, brothers and sisters, the question is not, does the church have a mission? The question is, does the mission have a church? Do you get that? Do you see it? The question is not, does the church, do we have a mission? The question is, does his mission have a church? Are we doing what he has called us to do? Well, it's that time of year again. It's a great time of year, one of the most important times of the year. No, I'm not talking about Thanksgiving. That's wonderful. It's a great time of the year. No, I'm not talking about Christmas. No, I'm not talking about harvest. I know there's a lot of farmers around here. It's that time, but this is a great time of year, one of the most important times of the year. You know why? Because it's college football season, right? We have any college football fans? I do want to give a shout out to Coach Lovejoy yesterday. Coach, good love. Coach Guy, Guy, I got his first name. Sorry, he, that, that was the coach on the other team. Yeah. No, yesterday in, in the Westville Tigers, correct? Uh, what a great season they had. I had a chance yesterday to take three Dominicans to their very first American football game yesterday to watch Westville. And so I don't know if you knew it, Coach. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you knew it, Coach, but you had uh, people fly all the way from the Dominican Republic to be at the game yesterday to cheer you on. And we were cheering for the Tigers. Now, they have no idea what any of the rules in football actually are, but that's okay. We had a a great time. And we also yesterday got to uh, be with uh, with, uh, Connie, old son Chris, in a combine. And these guys got to ride in a combine to see what farming is all about. But it's a great time of year. It's college football season. Now, I love college football. I'm from Virginia, and so I'm actually a big Virginia Tech Hokies fan, okay? Now, don't worry. This sermon is not to convince you to become a Virginia Tech Hokies fan, Okay? But that's just where I grew up. That's who I love. A couple weeks ago, I had the privilege in Virginia to take my oldest son. He's 11, Micah. I had the privilege of taking him to a college football game. Now, we went to the stadium, and we dressed up in all the Hokies gear. It's maroon and orange. And we went to the stadium, and I remember walking up to the stadium. His eyes just got really big because the stadium is just huge. He said, oh, man. I said, wait till you get inside. We walk inside, and you know how it is. got to walk up those big ramps to get all the way up to the nosebleed section where our seats were. And then you walk out that one ramp that kind of walks out from where the concessions are onto like into, the, into the arena, into the field. And we walked up that ramp, and I remember my son, he saw about 65,000 Hokie fans all surrounding him, jumping up and down and cheering for the team. He said, Dad, this is awesome. We find our seats, and... We, go to, we get in our seats and we cheer for the entire game. About three hours straight, my son never sat down. 
He's cheering, he's cheering. And we're watching all those players down there go back and forth. We're watching them hit each other hard, trying to t- take, knock the head off the quarterback. You know how football is. And we love it, and it's fun, but it's safe. Because we are up in the stands watching them play the football game. You see, my son and I were in a safe position, and I was comfortable because I knew that I didn't have to step on that field and try to go up against a 250-pound linebacker. The problem in our Christian faith, brothers and sisters, is too many times that fan mentality carries over to our Christian walk. Too many times as Christians, we like to be just one of the fans up in the stands Watching the the real Christians down there actually battle and actually fight and actually try to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the great commission of Jesus Christ is not a spectator sport. It's not a spectator sport. We as Christians are called to be the players. We are called to be the competitors, the participators, the ones who are actually on the field making disciples. Jesus didn't say, therefore, go And watch other Christians make disciples. Therefore, go and watch other people be my witnesses. No, he looks at every Christian. He says, go and you make disciples. And what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, that it's time as Christians in the world, it's time that we get in the game. It's time that we step out of the the stands, we step down onto the field and get into the game. This morning, I want to invite my three Brothers from the Dominican Republic, if you guys will come on up here. Por favor, que, que pasen por aquí. This morning I brought three, and I, I don't say this lightly, three of my favorite people in the whole world are here with me. I'm going to introduce them to you because I truly believe that these three men right here are doing their part to make disciples and to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ. Pueden sentarse. I want to introduce them to you, and then each one of them is going to share with you a little bit about how they are trying their best to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ because they decided they needed to get in the game and make disciples. First we have, come up here Juan, pasa por aquí Juan, por favor. First we have, as we call him, Grandpa, just because he's the oldest. This is Juan Diaz. Juan is the lead minister of one of our five church plants, church in Iguay, Iguay Christian Church. And Juan is the lead minister at this church, and he's been there for about, about 15 months. Juan, I want to ask you a question in your church. Tengo varias preguntas para ti, okay? First of all, Juan, about how many children are in the children's program in your church? Más o menos, ¿cuántos niños están en el programa de niños? Tenemos uno 196, casi 200. We have 196 children on the roster, almost 200 children just in our children program. Amen, amen. Juan, about how many teenagers are in the youth group on Saturday nights? Más o menos, ¿cuántos jóvenes están en el grupo de jóvenes? Tenemos tres eh, actividades de jóvenes, pero en términos general tenemos unos 70. We have three different activities, three different groups of teenagers. We split them in three different groups. We have right at 70 teenagers in our youth group in our church in Iguay. Amen? And now the most important question. Ahora la pregunta más importante. ¿Cómo tú has visto la mano de Dios in tu ministerio? Juan, how have you seen the hand of God move in your ministry? Bueno, <laughs> que Dios te bendiga, iglesia. Eh, may God bless you. Que Dios le bendiga. Aleluya. <laughs> pues hemos visto la mano de Dios obrar de una manera tremenda. We have seen the hand of God move in a great way. Hemos entendido cuál ha sido el llamado que hace el Señor cuando nos constituye en comisión. We have seen that the, the hand of God move in a great way because he's given us this great commission. Y a veces cuando tú haces lo que tienes que hacer, cuando tú acudes al llamado que Dios te ha dado. And sometimes pues, when you follow the calling that God has given you. Pues alguien se levanta. ¿Cómo es? Alguien se levanta en contra. Uh, when, when, sometimes when you follow the, 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 the calling that God has given you, sometimes someone goes against you. Y producto de esto, pues hubo una persona que dijo. And this happened to me when one person said. Y no aparece quien le dé dos puñaladas al pastorcito este. This happened to me when I was evangelizing. Someone came and they said, hey, where's that preacher? Because I'm ready to stab him. Y yo pregunté, ¿quién dijo eso? And I was talking to some of the kids on the street and I said, which, which one of you said you wanted to stab me? Yo voy donde él. Because I want to go to his house. Y fui a su casa y toqué la puerta. And they told me who it was and I went to his house and I knocked on the door. Y con una sonrisa pregunté, dígale, y, y fulano, ¿está por aquí? 
And, I, and with a smile, I asked his mother, is, is, I don't know the kid's name, is, is, Dígale que venga. is he here? I would like to talk with him. Dígale que el pastor de la iglesia. Tell him that the preacher from the church is here. He wants to talk to him. Y él salió medio. And he came, out, he came out walking like this, really nervous. Y cuando se acerca, and when he got close to me, le digo, Dios te bendiga. I told him, may God bless you. Y le digo, He sabido mucho de ti. And I said, I know a lot about you. Y me he dado cuenta que donde quiera que tú estás, and I have noticed that no, no import, it doesn't matter where you are. Hay 10, 12, 15 muchachos there's contigo. There's always 10 or 15 other uh, uh, teenagers following you. Lo que me hace saber que tú eres realmente es un líder. And what it tells me is you really are a leader in this community. Y yo me pregunto. And I asked myself, ¿Qué haría el Señor contigo si tú le permitieras usar esa, ese talento que tú le has dado y lo sumaría al poder de Dios? And I asked myself and I asked him, I wonder what God could do with you if you'd use the same talent for him. Y este hombre, este joven, and this, this teenager, eh, le invité a la iglesia. All right, we invited him to come to church. Le dije cuál era el programa que teníamos cada him, semana en la iglesia. We told him when were the times to come to church. Y para la gloria de Dios. And to the glory of God. Hoy él visita la iglesia. And he comes every single Saturday and Sunday now. ¿Sabes por qué? Do you know why? Porque entendimos el llamado que Dios nos hizo. Because we're doing our best to follow the calling that God has given us. ¿Sabes por qué? Do you know why? Porque dice la Biblia. Because the Bible says, en Filipenses 4, 13, in uh, Philippians 4.13, todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens ¿Sabes por me. Qué? Do you know why? Porque la Biblia dice, because the Bible says, y por todo el mundo, and for all the world, y predicar el Evangelio de Jesucristo. You have to preach the gospel to all the world. Y Él siempre te va a respaldar. And He's always going to respond and God will always be with us. Y yo les felicito And I want to congratulate you. A cada uno de ustedes. I want to congratulate each one of you. Porque yo sé que lo que está haciendo el Señor en nuestro país. Because I know that what you're doing here in your, in your country. Ustedes han sido parte de esa responsabilidad. You guys have been a part of this ministry in Igwe since the day we started. Yo doy gloria a Dios. So I want to thank God for that. Por cada uno de sus vidas. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you. Gracias. He's absolutely right. You've been a part of this ministry since day one as we planted these five churches in the school. Sure, God used Her uh, Juan that night with that teenager, but you are a part of this story. You were a part of the story of the Igwe Christian Church and the La Romana Christian Church, Punta Cana Christian Church, Anamuya Christian Church, Otrabanda Christian Church, the school and the music ministry. You, through your partnership with us, have been a part of all of this. I want to introduce you. It's scary, by the way, When you have a preacher and then you add three more for one sermon, you never know how long it's actually going to take. I want to introduce you, Harold, come on up. You already met Harold during the communion. This is Harold Diaz. Harold is the associate minister at the Igwe Christian Church. He works with the youth. He works with the worship team. And Harold, um, as Juan said, you have between about 70 or 75 teenagers that you're really discipling. Harold, I have a question for you. Harold, how have you seen God transform lives in your ministry? Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it in English too. Um, yeah, I think, I, I really think that God is for everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you practice. You need God. And it's something that we're doing for, to, to, to accomplish what God has commanded us to do is that we're just we, we, we just made like a, an outreach ministry and um, we are just making friends just going into the community and making friends we got no bible with us we got nothing we're just going to make friends and something very interesting about it is that people we're not like hey god bless you you, you have to go to church because if not if you don't if you don't you go to hell I mean, it's not like that. It's just like, hey, how you doing? How was the basketball uh, uh, game? How was this? How was the baseball game and stuff like that? And we became, we become friends with them. And then it's way easier for us to like tell them, hey, what are you doing tonight? Let's just go to church. And some of them are like maybe drug dealers, maybe prostitutes, maybe, I don't know, something real bad. And, and actually, I mean, I know I don't have the time to break down all of it for you but but 
I can see how God has been using our church and us to, to kind of reach the community and kind of be friends with them and, 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 and be a part of what God is doing within our community throughout the relationships. I think everything comes through relationship. If you're my friend, you're willing to accept whatever I bring. So I'm just trying to be friend with you, and then you're going to come to church. You're going to have somebody to be feel comfortable with at church, and it's been awesome. Uh, drug, drug dealers have came to Christ. Uh, young people that have been maybe doing bad stuff on the streets at night, I, I've heard testimonies about it, and it's really it's awesome. It's awesome to hear what God is actually doing right there. And I really want to say thank you for like to all of you because you're actually too being part of what's happening there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Harold. Harold works with a youth group. He runs the entire youth group. He preaches every Saturday. He also teaches homiletics class, which is teaching young men how to preach. And he's been training three to four men how to preach and teaching them how to preach so they can teach in the future. He also, uh, one year ago, had a, a vision to start a worship team at the church. They never had a worship team. So he personally, now I'm bragging on him, it's going to embarrass him, okay? But that's okay. Watch his face turn red. <laughs> he personally taught people how to play guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, drums, keyboard, bass, and sing. And now today they have a worship band that plays every single Sunday Every single Sunday, they leave worship live. I don't know if I mentioned this, but he's 20 years old. And my Hoven. Eury, come on up. I want to introduce you to one more person. This is Eury Fabian Cordero. You can call him Big E. Now, Eury is a little bit different than these guys because Eury has been a part of our ministry. Come on up here, Eury. Since he was about 12 years old, he and his mother and his brother came to one of our churches in La Romana when, they were, when he was 12 years old. We watched him go through middle school. We watched him give his life to Christ. We watched him graduate high school. And then we said, what do you want to do with your life? He said, I want to be a doctor. So he got into medical school, got a grant from the government due to his, his income or lack thereof. And he got a grant from the government. He went to four years of medical school, and he is now a general practitioner in the Dominican Republic. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Once again, I didn't tell them that I was going to brag on them, okay, when they came up here. But here's what I want to tell you about Eudi. Since the day he became a Christian, he's always served in the local church. Eudi's been the youth minister there, volunteer youth minister there for years. He works on the worship team as well. He, he's the associate minister without the title. He also is a doctor. He has a full-time job with the government. He oversees about 20 different clinics. And he also works in our mission because we have a brand new medical outreach. It's only about a year old, as I mentioned where we offer services to a very poor neighborhood called Brisas del Mar. We offer medicines and surgeries and shots and anything they need. And this man right here is the director over that entire ministry. So, Eury, I have a, a similar question for you that I asked them, but a little bit different because it comes with medicine. Now, we love to help people and help cure people and give them the medicines they need, but we do that with a purpose because we do that in the name of Jesus. So I want to ask you this question. How have you, how have you seen God use you and your talents, specifically as a doctor in medicine, to evangelize or help fulfill the Great Commission? Entendiste la pregunta? Sí. Okay. Hola. <laughs> Hello. Well, eh, Dios ha obrado de manera muy grande en mi vida. God has really uh, done a great thing in my life. Me siento muy bendecido de estar en este lugar con ustedes. I, I feel very blessed to be here this morning with you. Bueno, um, Habla con ello. gracias. <laughs> bueno, um, Dios ha obrado de una manera muy grande en este año, principalmente. God has really done a great thing in this particular year. Pude conseguir una carta para el gobierno. I was able to receive a letter from the government. Porque había escuchado que personas que estaban presas no podían, uh, estaban enfermos y en un espacio muy pequeño. No podían casi ni respirar. Because I got word that in, in the local jail, in the local prison, there were a whole lot of young people in there in a very small space, and they crammed them in there, and a lot of them were sick. Entonces fue aprobada mi carta. And so I, I used my, my card, my permission from the government. 
y pude reunir médicos para poder ir a ese lugar a poder ver los pacientes uno por uno y poder tomar su presión, su azúcar y ver su estado de salud que era muy deprimente. And I was able to get a group of Dominican doctors together and go into the prison and to start taking blood pressures and check on all of these guys. El gobierno muchas veces olvida a esas personas, pero yo sé y un grupo sabemos que son humanos y Dios puede hablar en sus vidas. It, many times our government forgets about those who are in jail. They throw them in jail and they completely forget about them. But I know that they're human beings and that God loves them. Y pude tener contactos con muchos, pero de todos ellos hubieron dos personas que estaban muy mal, estaban por hacer cosas muy feas. So I was able to have contact and talk with a whole lot of them in the jail, but there were two in particular that I really connected with because they were the, they were the sickest. Entonces hablé de la palabra. So I, I, I started preaching the gospel to them, talking to them about Jesus. Mientras tomaba la presión. While I'm taking su... their blood pressure. <laughs> y les comentaba lo importante que eran para Dios ustedes. And what I would tell them while I'm taking their blood pressure and checking their vitals, I would tell them how important they are to God. Entonces, días después, estoy en la calle y veo ese, ese chico que dice, Hola, doctor, ¿cómo está? Several days later, I saw this one kid out in the street walking and he said, Hey, Dr. Eury, that's his name. Hey, Dr. Eury, how are you doing? Y dije, okay, uh, bien, ¿de dónde te conozco? And, and I said, Hey, how are you, how you doing? But I'm, I'm sorry, where, where do I know you from? Entonces él dice, soy el chico que usted le habló de la palabra y hoy estoy visitando la iglesia de mi madre. He said, I am that young man last week that I was in the prison that you talked to me about Jesus. I want to let you know that I'm in the church now. Y voy a, y, y te prometo. <laughs> Amen. That's okay. Give, give, God, give God all the glory for all of this, okay? Y me dijo con sus ojos llorando, te prometo no voy a volver a ese lugar. And he looked at me crying and he said, I promise you, Dr. Eury, I'm never going to go back to that life. Entonces, es ahí cuando yo digo que donde tú trabajas, puedes bendecir a otras vidas. And this is what I want to say, that it doesn't matter where you live or where you work or what you do, you have a calling to fulfill the Great Commission here and now where you are. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's give them a round of applause, will you? What is it, Gracias. So the question is not, does the church have a mission? We know what the mission is, to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ, to go and be his witnesses. Starting right here, right now, Jesus says, go be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now the cool thing is, they were in Jerusalem when he said this. So he says, go into Danville and be my witnesses. Go be my witnesses on the farm. Go be my witnesses on the football field. Go be my witnesses wherever you are, wherever you live. That's where you make disciples first. Go and be my witnesses. And that's exactly what these three guys are doing. And he's calling us this morning to get in the game. He's calling us to take the Great Commission seriously, to become active competitors, and to get in the game. He's calling us to pick up his playbook and to get in the game. The story goes, as I bring my sermon to a close this morning... The story goes that there was a young boy who had aspirations to be a, a great swimmer. Now, he got those desires from his older sister. He had two older sisters that trained every single day in the pool to be Olympic swimmers. Now, due to injury and other circumstances, the two sisters never, never became Olympic swimmers. But this young boy, he said, I'm going to do it. But this young boy had a problem. He'd go to the pool every single day with his sisters, and he would get in the pool and he'd swim around, but he had a problem. He was afraid to put his face in the water. So now how is he ever going to be an Olympic swimmer if you, if you can't put his face in the water? Now many things could have happened. His sisters could have made fun of him. They could have told him, like my older brother would have done with me, could have made fun of him and said, you're never going to be a good swimmer. The coach of the team, he could have said, listen here, buddy. I know you want to be a good swimmer, but your sisters have the talent. You really don't have any talent. But you know what? That's not what happened. One day, the coach looked right at this kid, and he said, Listen, I know you're afraid to put your face in the water, so here's what I want you to do. Every day you come here to the pool, the most important thing is that you get in the pool. Get in the pool, and then swim around on your back for a while until you're comfortable enough to put your face underwater. Which is why it should be no surprise that the backstroke is the first stroke that Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps ever conquered. Brothers and sisters, 
No athlete has ever won the prize without first competing in the event. We're never going to win the football game if we don't actually get on the field. It's the same in our Christian faith. It's the same in our Christian walk. We're never going to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ if we don't first get in the game. If we don't first take the commission of Jesus Christ seriously and begin making disciples. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian, this is your challenge. Get in the game. Don't take it from me. Jesus looks right at you and he says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. You will be my witnesses. It's not my challenge, it's Jesus' challenge. And it starts right here, right now, where you are, where you work. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, maybe today is time for you to get in the game. Now it's a little different for you. It's not time for you as a non-Christian to make disciples. It's time for you to become a disciple. It's time for you to take that step, that first step of faith, and become a Christian. Give your life to Jesus Christ and watch him transform your lives like some of these stories you've heard this morning. The question this morning, once again, brothers and sisters, is not does the church have a mission? The question is, does his mission have a church? What are we going to do about it? Are we doing our best to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ? I personally want to thank you so much for being a part of our ministry in the Dominican Republic. Yes, you live here, but you, through your tithes and offerings, through your prayers, you've been a part of our ministry for years. And God is transforming lives and using people like my three brothers, Juan, Eudi, and Harold, to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ in the Dominican Republic. I want to thank you for being a part of that. And I just want to challenge us as a generation, as a church in the United States, we've got to get in the game. We've got to take this commission seriously. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you, Father, for being here with us, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your commission, Father, to go and make disciples, to be your witnesses throughout the world. Father, I hope that we do that. I hope that as a church, Father, we make you proud. I thank you for my three brothers from the Dominican that are doing their best to do that. I pray that their stories will motivate all of us to take this commission seriously. Father, use this church, bless this church. And as we go out today, Father, help us go out with a different mindset than we came in. Help us go out ready to be witnesses for you. In your name I do pray, amen.